Let's face it, driving at night can be a lot more difficult. We rely heavily on our vehicles, headlights, or if we're lucky, street lights to see where we're going in the dark. To make matters worse, everybody traveling in the opposite direction is trying to see as well, making it hard to see ourselves in the oncoming glaring light. But what if we could enter a realm where the visible light we see with our eyes no longer existed, but instead we could see in only heat? The blinding headlights from oncoming traffic would disappear. Welcome to the world of thermography. Did you know everything in the known existence is actually producing invisible light? The hotter an object gets, like this cup of coffee, the more infrared light it's going to give off and also increase in frequency. Think of a piece of steel. As you start to heat it up with a torch, it'll start to glow. And that's the point where the invisible becomes visible. And it's not much different with this hot cup of coffee besides the fact that we can't see it with our eyes. But with thermography, we can actually see the light that's given off by this hot coffee versus the cold nighttime background behind it. Thermography or thermal imaging has been a staple of modern warfare for decades, but it also has less nefarious uses as well. In 2015, BMW partnered with FLIR to create their night vision option. And this was basically a thermal imaging camera that allowed the user to see better at night and it would auto detect people and animals. I actually worked at a BMW dealership for quite a long time. And a few years ago, I actually got to try their system out at night and it was pretty neat. However, it was a very expensive and rare option to find. We had hardly ever see it come into the dealership. And the price of this option was a whopping $2,500. And starting in 2023, BMW has completely discontinued this option. However, there is an aftermarket solution made by Robofinity called Insight Drive, and it's very similar to the discontinued BMW system. Robofinity was kind enough to send me this kit to test out on the channel. However, other than getting the product, they're not paying me a dollar amount to make this video. However, I will have some affiliate links and stuff in the description if you want to check it out. And of course, like all my videos, I like to share like the pros and cons of the products I review. By the way, I have made chapters in this video, so you can click on the exact part you want to see so you don't have to waste your time. Let's go ahead and unbox this thing and see what it's all about. It's very well packaged uh, with lots of foam protecting everything. Up top, we have the three main core components that make this thing work. In the middle, we have the screen. And then on the right side is the control box or the AI box. And then on the left side is the actual thermal imaging camera that's going to be mounted outside the vehicle because thermal imaging does not work through glass. In the bottom of the box, we have the dash mount. We have a couple of cables, power cable, and the cable for the screen. Then we have a little tool to fish the camera wire uh, through a firewall boot. And then we got some instructions and then a little bit of cable organization hardware and some extra mounting stickers. And check it out, it actually comes with a SanDisk SD card. I'll just read through the instructions and it's pretty simple to install. I'll be installing this in my 99 Toyota 4Runner. The first thing we're gonna do is open the hood. We'll start by mounting this camera and it just clamps down onto the back of your hood uh, using these little studs. And it comes with the triangle bit driver and you just slowly snug them up and it's got a rubber and a plastic piece so it shouldn't scratch anything. And then just route the wire under the hood and you should be able to close it. And on this vehicle, the camera doesn't stick up higher than the wipers. I decided to mount mine in the front bumper next to the license plate. And if you do this, make sure to not mount it to anything that's loose and that's gonna wiggle a lot over bumps. I did have to cut out a slot in the grill just so I'll be able to angle the camera 
I marked and made three holes in the bumper uh, to line up where those three studs go and also a hole for the wire on the grill. I bolted the camera on with three M4 screws with washers and then I placed nylocks on the other side so they won't back out. But after I had the camera mount it where I want it, I went ahead and routed the camera wiring up to the firewall. I decided to use this boot where a wire harness already goes through and I also use this for my subwoofer wiring. But I just took a razor blade, made a little slit, and pushed the USB-C connector through, and then grabbed it on the other side, and then pulled the rest of the wire in. I zip tied all of the wires under the hood, and we should be all done in the engine bay. The end of the camera is a USB-C connector, and it ships with the little connector housing uh, disassembled, so it's easier to uh, get through the firewall. And we just have to assemble it with the included hardware. And then we can plug it into the control box and tighten down the thumb screws. It's kind of just like an old school computer monitor. I'm going to go ahead and wire everything up to make sure it works. I'll take the bigger harness, which is for the screen and the power, and then we'll plug this connector into the control box. And then the shorter part will connect to the power. Make sure to check the pins because uh, the screen has a different number of pins than the power adapter and make sure it's lined up, plug it in, and then we'll plug in the longer end to the screen and just make sure that little notch lines up on both sides so the pins are lined up. And then we can plug the power adapter into a 12 volt socket and it comes with a USB socket on it as well so you can charge your phone with this still plugged in. And on my 4Runner, it doesn't get power until the key is on. So when we turn the key on, it should power up. I'll just insert the included memory card and the graphics face toward the rear. Don't forget to adjust the camera so the horizon is right about in the center and it comes with the Torx driver. Normally at this point you would just route the wires and make sure everything's up and out of the way and it would be ready to go. However, I decided to power it behind my dash and install a fuse and a three position switch. It's a little more complicated and I'm not going to go too much into that on this video. But I just like a nice and tidy install with a flush mounted switch. And the output power on the car plug is 12 volts. I mounted the screen and the magnetic mount to my dash and it's just a little adhesive part. And also drilled a hole for the cable to pass through. Then I made sure all of the wires were hidden and zip tied up. And I found a good spot to mount the control box. I'll plug it in and stick it on the magnetic mount and we're good to go. Here's the spec sheet for the Insight Drive X1 and the actual thermal imaging resolution is 256 by 192 and I'm not sure what the equivalent resolution means but it has a AI a super resolution upscaling that makes it look a lot better and also the frame rate is 25 hertz so it looks nice and smooth. With my customization, I hooked up the switch so the middle position is off all the time and then the down position is it'll turn on even if the key is not in the vehicle and then the up position is it'll only turn on with the ignition. And I want to keep it off during the day because you're not supposed to have it on with direct sunlight. However, it has an internal shutter so when it's off it shouldn't damage the sensor. But there is a warning about it on the box. If you touch the screen, you bring up the settings and it'll automatically start recording and you can start and stop recording with this button. And then it has a button to turn on or off the rain mode. And then I have the sound off, but you can turn it on low, high or just off. And if you stop recording, you can look at all of the videos that were saved on the SD card. And then there's a settings button and you can change the display brightness from low, medium to high. And you can choose English or Chinese language. And you can also format the card. However, I'm not going to do that right now because I want to keep the images that are on here. And to connect the app, you have to join the Cyberbox network on the Wi-Fi. And then the app is called Insight Drive AI. Just click on that. And you can see what the screen is seeing on your phone. And it's got the time and date, and then settings, the AI recognition, uh, my pedestrian on, animal on, and I actually just turned vehicle off. And originally this wasn't working on my iPhone. This is an Android phone, but I just had to update it. And to update it, you just go to general, and then upgrade, 
I did it on my iPhone and you have to have an internet connection and be connected uh, to Wi-Fi at the same time. But you can turn on and off the rainy day mode and alarm distance, um, settings, image display. And this also has a heads up display mode where you can set it back and they sell like a little film to put on your windshield to make it look nice and clear so it doesn't give you that double vision and inversion mode so if you mounted it upside down you can do it here but yeah as soon as i updated it on my iphone it remembered the settings originally i would make the settings and then it would just forget them immediately but it's working great now now let's go ahead and take it for a drive and really test this thing out here we are leaving the neighborhood and it's pretty cool to see what this looks like at night I left the vehicle identification on for a bit, but I eventually turned it off just because it's a bit busy, especially when you're in traffic. But it does a pretty good job at picking up vehicles. All of the identification tells you how far something is from your vehicle, which I'm not really sure how they're doing that, but it seems kind of accurate. Here I am at Bucky's, and you can see that guy is walking his dog, and it picks up on him, but not his dog. And you can see how busy it gets with the car identification on, and here it is uh, without that on at a different time. I hopped on a two-lane highway, and I'm heading up to the mountains. And you can just see the difference between all of that glare on my windshield uh, versus the thermal imager with the semi and these other cars. It's also just so crazy how far you can see down the road outside your headlights. And check this out, you can see the mountains on the thermal imager, but it's completely dark out there and I can't see anything with my own eyes. Unfortunately, I didn't see any animals going up the mountain, but sometimes there'll be deer and moose out here. But maybe I'll make a long-term review video, uh, maybe a year from now, and get all the wildlife I catch on this thing see how it really works when there's an actual situation where deer is crossing the road but now let's do a little bit of off-roading in the forerunner and check this thing out i will say uh it does kind of false identify stuff sometimes like it'll pick up on tree trunks for some reason i don't know if it thinks it's people but it's usually just for like a split second and also sometimes rocks will be picked up as like cars it can be a little creepy when you're in the dark forest because you don't really know if it would picked up on something it was actually there or not. Um, honestly, I'd be kind of afraid to drive past a graveyard with this thing. You can see with the camera mounted lower on the bumper, uh, definitely kind of runs into the tall grass, but the lens does have a high strength uh, protective window according to the specs. But there's probably some pros and cons to mounting it on your hood versus the bumper. Um, I just think it's out of the elements a little bit more. And then you also don't have as many people like asking you what that thing is on your hood. It is pretty crazy how much more you can see into the forest with the thermal versus just your headlights. And if you were looking close, you could definitely probably see something out there you know, walking around. Maybe a Sam Squanch. I also did find a lot of cows when I was driving off road. However, for some reason the AI didn't pick up on them, but you could definitely see them on the thermal imager when it was actually hard to see them with the headlights. So now we're going back to the city and I got the vehicle identification turned off. So it looks a lot better in my opinion. And it definitely picked up uh, some pedestrians and there was one bicycle it didn't pick up, but it did pick up another bicycle. So you can't always 100% rely on it, but it does seem pretty helpful. And also another interesting thing is even with vehicles off, it picks up motorcycles as people. And it's pretty interesting to look at all of the vehicles where you can see the hot exhaust tires and brakes and everything. And there's almost enough detail where you can figure out what make and model uh, the vehicles is just by looking at the thermal imager. It definitely gives your passengers something to look at. Another interesting thing is if you're going through a parking lot, you can actually see uh, what cars were recently driven. I also did run into some rain and it does smear the camera a little bit temporarily. And I still haven't tried it out in the fog yet because we don't get a whole lot of that here. Also, every so often you'll see the video feed freeze up for a moment and this is actually the thermal imager just calibrating itself. Every thermal imager that I've used so far does this. And right as I got home, I found a little bunny rabbit and it actually picked up on it. So far, I think this system is pretty neat. I do need to test it out some more, maybe do a long-term review, but it's incredibly unique. 
Although not perfect like anything, um, it does pick up pretty good on people, vehicles, and animals. It will be interesting to see how it improves after numerous software updates. And one thing to note, the screen did fall off the magnetic mount once. And I think that could be fixed by adding some kind of like friction material um, so it doesn't slide down over time. Also, the mount did detach from my dashboard once uh, when it was in the really hot sun. However, they give you extra adhesive discs to remount it. And you just want to make sure that you clean it really good before you install it. And on my dash, I ended up having to use a bolt because it would keep falling off in the hot sun. But this might just be uh, because of the way of my dash is. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. And I will see you next time. Peace out.